If this looks familiar, it's because it's the same introduction I used for the Forza Horizon 5 preview video based on Xbox Series X code. The difference is that this time, this is the base Xbox One running the same content. Yeah, really. I mean, content designed to show the scale and scope of the open world in the game to emphasize the game's next-gen credentials looks eminently decent on the base console, and I wanted to kick off this cross-platform analysis to reveal just how Playground Games has managed to achieve scalability in this astonishing title, and to do so without compromising performance or image quality. So yes, Xbox One, it can render the open world without it looking like a barren, featureless desert. Although Forza Horizon 5 has that too, of course. It can deliver some beautifully realized dynamic lighting, shifting with the time of day, integrating beautiful global illumination. The volumetric lighting that looks so good in the E3 presentation, it's in base Xbox One as well. Beautiful car models, and lots of them on screen simultaneously with no drop-in performance. Yup, Xbox One can do that. Dense cityscapes at night with full dynamic lighting, that's in there too. And finally, to cap it off, how about stormy weather within the jungle? It works. Performance isn't compromised. Now let's look at some side-by-sides. Xbox One versus Xbox Series X in its highest end quality mode. If we use the introductory drive sequence to illustrate how the machines compare, it's obvious that the core essence of the game is there on the older hardware. It's content complete. The intro drive covers off four distinct areas in the game. First of all, there's the descent from the top of the volcano, a statement of intent from Playground about the vertical scalability in the game, literally larger than anything we've seen in a Horizon game before. The next phase, a drive into a sandstorm, emphasizing the developer's vision for new and different weather conditions. Next up, the jungle, a blast through a dense, packed environment. The kind of content that really puts the GPU through its paces. On PC, we see the performance requirement here rise by about 50% compared to the prior segments. It's challenging stuff. And finally, the desert and a dash to the horizon tournament. It's all about speed here. Now let's be clear, driving at speed here does flatter Xbox One with motion blur hiding a lot of the intricate detail you're getting on Series X. And you can see easily enough that the motion blur itself on Series X is far superior to Xbox One. But the point is that Playground's strategy of scalability is paying off. The games are leagues apart in many ways, but still close enough to make for, and dare I say it, a unified Horizon ecosystem. If you're running Series X, you can still play against Xbox One, One X and Series S owners within the same game world. There's no segregation. Now let's compare and contrast against our old Forza Horizon 2 comparison video from back in the day. FH2 has something in common with Horizon 5. They both brought in a new era of gaming. They both straddled two console generations. However, back then, a separate Xbox 360 version was created mirroring only some of the content and features of the Xbox One game. This time, Playground attempts an audacious level of scalability that pays off, that gracefully accommodates every Xbox console from the One and the Series generations, and it wasn't easy. Accommodating four different consoles and a total of six different play modes, not to mention PC on top of that, is part of the reason that this game took three years to develop when Horizons 2, 3 and 4 were delivered in two. So I visited Playground Games a few weeks back and the emphasis on scalability formed the first part of the studio tour. In ensuring that the game looks good on all systems, the team developed this remarkable cross-platform comparison system. What you're seeing here are five of the six Xbox iterations of the game. From left to right, it's Series X quality, X performance, Series S quality, S performance, then finally base Xbox One on the right there. You'll note that the base machine used for testing is the original Durango Xbox One, the classic set-top box model. Xbox One S is the updated unit with a slightly more powerful GPU. But if you're good to go on Durango, you'll obviously be in even better shape on One S. What makes this setup so fascinating is that one controller can be used to move debug cameras around on every system, allowing for real-time image comparisons. 
When a change is made to the rendering setup, it can be tested on all systems at the same time. And yes, it also serves as a bit of a cheat sheet for us in that we know how key systems scale across the console. But really, this is just the beginning. I'm going to illustrate the scale of the challenge in producing a cross-platform comparison video for Forza Horizon 5 by showing you this shot. You see, sometimes there's content that doesn't really need to do much in the way of scalability. So in the desert here, Xbox One may be lacking a bit of procedurally generated vegetation, shading detail is a touch reduced too, and ground textures are nowhere near as detailed. But actual scalability is limited here, because the content does not demand it. It's a fairly basic scene after all. Now, let's move over to this shot. Foliage density, foliage shading, shadows in general, ground detail. It's a world apart. The GPU is being tasked in delivering what are essentially two different interpretations of the same content. Or how about here at the top of the volcano? This scene is all about rocks, volcanic debris. Looks great for an Xbox One game, but look what happens when we move to Series X. A dramatic increase in ground density, ground texture quality, shading quality, lighting, ambient occlusion, everything. This is just the beginning of how this game scales. But let's talk about the basics first of all. We have six distinct Horizon 5 variants here, so let's talk about image quality and performance. These are actually of crucial importance for the last generation machines. Forza games in general have a visual signature defined by how pristine they look with Turn 10 and Playground games aiming for native resolutions, high-end anti-aliasing and rock-solid performance. We'll kick off with Xbox One and Xbox One X, which both target 30 frames per second at 1080p and 4K respectively, each with 4X MSAA, a series hallmark. As you can see here, they hit that performance target consistently and almost without fail. I actually spent the most time playing base Xbox One out of all of the renditions of the game as this was the one where performance would be the most challenged. And in the Gold Master Code I did actually find a very small limited amount of areas where the game could not hit its performance target. The Cathedral Circuit, as shown here for example, could drop badly. But the bottom line is that the day one version you'll play fixed every issue I could find in the Goldmaster code. This is quite a feat of optimization actually, but I'd describe Forza Horizon 5 as being as close to locked as we could hope for, bearing in mind the extraordinary load being placed on the old hardware. So yes, as you've been seeing, the Cathedral Circuit in its present form on base Xbox One and Xbox One X may well have uh, one or two frame drops on the base machine, but overall it runs great. Based on testing from the jungle scene on PC, GPU load rises to an extraordinary degree, but again, both of the last gen machines carry off the action pretty much flawlessly. Xbox One X is quite the marvel here because it's pushing a much higher resolution and it's able to deliver scenes broadly equivalent to the performance modes of the next gen consoles. We'll talk more about that in a bit. It's worth pointing out here that for the first time that we are aware of, Forza is using dynamic resolution scaling. Xbox One can hit a minimum of 810p and One X 1600p, but DRS scaling is the last line of defense. Most of the game runs natively and then it'll scale back elements like cube map reflections and shadow updates to save a couple of milliseconds of GPU time before it will resort to dropping resolution, which in turn can save up to 5 to 6 milliseconds. Playground calls this system DRS Plus. Quick look at this nighttime scene, again pretty much a flat 30 FPS, but at the very beginning of this scene I noted a little bit of screen tearing on Xbox One X here. Fleeting, unnoticeable, but it is there. Beyond DRS then, there's another fallback, the ability to swap in the newly rendered frame if it's a millisecond or two late in rendering. As the swap happens, it produces the tearing. This barely happens and I was lucky to find it at all, but all consoles can theoretically do this, even the series machines. Let's move on to the next tier, the quality modes on Xbox Series X and Series S, the pinnacle of visual achievement for playground games on the consoles, especially on Series X. There, playground targets what is broadly equivalent to PC's ultra preset, but actually pushes ahead of that in one or two key systems. Again, we're looking at 30 frames per second here, and having sunk many hours into the game, I have yet to see Forza Horizon 5 move from this target, no matter what content I throw at it. 
30 FPS mode on the series consoles is remarkable because performance is so consistent and the quality level and integrity of level of detail is so extraordinary. Motion blur is perfectly judged, controller response absolutely fine. Remarkably, even though there is a 60 frames per second performance mode, I've settled on 30 FPS for my main playthrough. We'll discuss why shortly. But the bottom line here is that the Xbox Series X unwaveringly runs at native 4K, again with 4X MSAA, while Xbox Series S has actually had an upgrade from the preview code we played. That used to be 1080p fixed, but now dynamic resolution is reinstated for this mode, which operates with a DRS range of 1080p to 1440p. But I was actually quite surprised to see that resolution can still hit and sustain 1440p, even in challenging jungle environments like this one. The intro drive jump here is a good example of this. Quality mode is about more than just pixel counts and resolutions though. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, so let's move on. The final batch of performance tests concerns the performance mode, which targets 60 frames per second on both series machines. Xbox Series S aims for 1080p, but like One S, can drop to 810p as its last line of defense against actual frame drops, where I couldn't find any. Meanwhile, Xbox Series X operates in the same 1600p to 2160p window as Xbox One X, and it pays off. After a few hours of testing, this is literally the only drop I could find on Series X. A couple of torn frames and a single frame drop as our car hits the water in this dense jungle scene. And getting that frame drop kind of required aiming specifically for the water to create the biggest splash possible. Unnoticeable in the run of play, of course. All other tests saw the game deliver exactly what you'd want from it, slick performance. So to recap then, from what we've seen so far, Forza Horizon 5's scalability absolutely is impressive. I'd say that Xbox One and especially Xbox One X owners get a game that does look to get the best out of their respective consoles. What specifically makes this game work on those platforms is that the core features are present and correct, but crucially image quality and performance are both consistent and of a high quality. However, I'd want to play this game on either of the series machines, but there are numerous reasons for this, and it's not just about graphics or 60 frames per second gaming, but obviously they help. Loading is the nemesis of the last gen consoles, and that starts in the game's intro drive, the traditional showcase for the Horizon experience. Everything flows beautifully on Xbox Series consoles. You transition seamlessly from one section of the game to the next with 30 FPS pre-rendered video sequences bridging the gap. I'd have liked to have seen higher quality video. I'd have liked to have seen a 60 FPS pre-rendered sequence for the 60 FPS modes, but regardless, the point is that the experience flows. It doesn't on Xbox One and Xbox One X, as there's a loading break between each of the sections. In the first tier, it's 35 seconds on Xbox One and almost 38 on One X. On the second, the wait between drives is lower at almost 23 seconds for both last gen systems. As you can see though, it's instant on both of the series machines. It's not instant in-game though, even on the series machines. Just an example here, a look at an exhibition event load. Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, both of them clock in at around 9 seconds of loading time, but that's still a lot shorter to wait than on last gen, which sees the same sequence load in 25 seconds. Now I'd say that overall this does have an impact on the flow of the game. Everything runs a lot smoother on the newer consoles, where we see the SSD being put to work. But on to the graphics comparisons, and as I said earlier, this is kind of tricky because Playground has a lot of levers it can pull to scale up and scale down fidelity. If you've seen John's Tech Focus video, you'll see that Xbox Series X in quality mode is capable of incredible detail at the kind of close range you'll likely never see in-game unless you dip into photo mode. But the way I see it, there are essentially three general tiers of graphics in the console builds. Xbox One is at the bottom of the pile, as you may expect. Things get more interesting on the next rung up though. Xbox One X at 30 FPS looks quite similar to Xbox Series X in its 60 FPS performance mode, and this kind of makes sense, right? A 12 teraflop machine delivers similar visuals to a 6 teraflop machine, but at twice the performance level. 
Then at the top level, for consoles at least, there's the quality mode. This really does push out the boat in terms of detail and precision. It's up there with PC on ultra settings and actually pushes to extreme settings on a couple of key presets. We'll discuss that in a moment. So yeah, of these three tiers, there can be some variations, but let's dig in first of all by looking at the base Xbox One. Starting with a vehicle, this uses a significantly lower level of detail model than the five other versions of the game, and obviously there's lower quality reflections there. The bent normals, playground added, which improve reflection quality significantly, they're also gone. Looking at this model comparison here, it's pretty obvious that texture quality is significantly lower. Of course, we're looking at replay angles here, at close range, which does emphasize the difference, but Xbox One seems to be the only version with this specific combination of drawbacks. Moving on to environment detail, as I mentioned earlier, the extent of the differences will change according to the biome. In a less detailed environment, Xbox One retains more of the Series X's overall look, but ultimately Forza Horizon 5 is defined by its density, and that starts with ground detail. Using a virtual texturing system, the game can layer up to five detail levels on Xbox Series X, and it can further embellish that with parallax occlusion mapping. By comparison, Xbox One is pretty basic with little sense of depth. Xbox Series X in performance mode, our kind of tier two graphics mode if you like, is a lot better, and this also represents the gain you get from Xbox One X. Finally, Series X quality mode is the top tier. It's essentially a world apart. This is your next generation difference. It's not just the ground, but what's on the ground too, of course. Environmental detail is very much on the low side on the base Xbox One. In a typical environment here, there is representation of ground detail, but it's fairly sparse. Resolution of the assets is low, and there's little sense of grounding in the scene. Stepping up to a Series X performance mode, there's actual debris now, more fully realized foliage and vegetation and what looks like actual shading on that environmental detail. Once again, Xbox Series X quality mode takes things to the next level. Even more plants of different types and dense vegetation. This is more of a typical Horizon environment, but far from the richest biome in the game, and that's where the difference can be huge. So once we go into the jungle, it's as I mentioned earlier, Xbox One is basically a different interpretation of the same content. There's a lot missing, obviously, but it's important to stress that the main objects that have collision characteristics are locked on all versions of the game. The presentation, however, clearly worlds apart. Obviously, the density speaks for itself as we move up to Series X performance mode, which, as I said, is quite close to Xbox One X quality, Vegetation, foliage and plants are denser, richer. You may also note that the actual lighting model for foliage on Xbox One is very different, it's a lot more basic. All other versions of the game get much more realistic foliage lighting. It's one of the more stark differences beyond density. Finally, as we transition to Xbox Series X quality mode, well, again, density and fidelity reach a new level. Post-process effects on Xbox One can also be paired back, but the key systems are there. Volumetrics, surfle-based global illumination, they are there, they just run at a lower resolution. Playground uses a post-process on volumetrics to reduce artifacting significantly, and I found that this works pretty well. So ultimately, Xbox One does work in delivering a good Forza Horizon 5 experience. And if you're an Xbox One owner, who's played prior Forza titles, I think this game will work for you, but as we've seen, once you move on to Xbox One X and series performance modes, you're getting a much better looking game with fewer visual drawbacks. And when you hit the Series X quality mode, this is genuinely next level stuff. Okay, so while I've divided the game into three general graphical tiers, obviously there are variations within those tiers. So if we consider Xbox One X and series performance modes as a single tier, I actually found Xbox One X to have some advantages in some scenarios over the Series S performance mode. Going back to this shot, it seems to me that texture detail on Xbox One X is superior to Xbox Series S, and in this shot at least, shadows under the vehicle also look better on One X. Variances between consoles, however, do seem to change significantly according to content. Conversely, if we look at this scene and compare Xbox One X to Xbox Series X's performance mode, 
ground detail clearly has an extra layer on the new console. Ambient occlusion also seems generally improved and level of detail varies between the two systems. So yeah, while we do have those three very general tiers for graphical features, it's clear that Playground has tailored the experience significantly for each and every console. Finally, looking at the top tier, the next gen quality mode, Series X isn't just a higher resolution version of Series S, though they do look fairly close. We've discussed the sheer density of this mode and it's a treat on both machines, but even here there are some differences. There's more memory available on the higher end machine, meaning higher quality textures in addition to that higher resolution. And if we look at ground detail again, this is already very rich on Xbox Series S, but it gets the added dimensionality of parallax occlusion mapping on Series X, adding an extra layer of terrain deformation. Cone step mapping is also added to environmental detail on Series X, meaning that in photo mode there's a remarkable granularity uh, to detail and depth in many surfaces. This may be a fast-paced racing game, but man, these visuals are holding up beautifully even when viewed static at very close range. One final difference here that really shows the attention to detail you get on Series X quality mode. Here you're seeing the implementation of PC's extreme setting for shadows on Series X and likely Ultra on Series S. Series X is using percentage closer shadows, so essentially shadows become more diffuse the further away the shadow is from the object that's casting it gives a much more realistic look, albeit somewhat subtle. And finally, a quick word on hardware accelerated ray tracing. We saw it in the preview code on Xbox Series X, but it wasn't yet implemented on Series S, but it's definitely in place in the final game, as you can see here, adding additional self-reflections to the game's already impressive reflection technology. We'd love to see it in game, but for now at least, it's restricted to Forza Vista and the garage. So that's where we are with Forza Horizon 5. Taking on a systems comparison is daunting because there's no real one-size-fits-all quote-unquote mode that can be attributed to any given version of the game. Any number of variables can seemingly change in any given scene. There really is the sense that Playground has carefully tuned every version. And those last-gen consoles, they, they hold up, especially Xbox One X. And on the Scorpio machine, it's not so much the visuals that turn me off, it's more the level of detail pop-in and the loading times. But still, it's a highly creditable version. And in terms of how I prefer to play, well, 60fps is alluring of course, and the game is still extremely attractive, but it's Series X quality mode I've opted to stick with. Motion blur quality is exceptional, the best I've seen in bridging the gap between 30fps and 60fps, Input lag, even in the 30 FPS mode, is still very, very impressive. But really, it's the depth and consistency in the game world that I found astonishing. And the integrity. LOD popping isn't completely gone. At high speeds across the open world, it can be seen. However, it's massively reduced compared to performance mode and really helps to sell the believability of this beautiful world that Playground Games has created. Can you have that level of fidelity at 60 frames per second? Well, that's where the PC version comes in, but I'll be leaving that to Alex to examine more thoroughly. But that's where I am for now. Please do like, subscribe, share if you enjoyed the work. And of course, subscribers can press the bell icon there for those all-important notifications when we post new video content. The DF Supporter Program. Well, join us. Join our community. Speak to us on Discord. Get access to exclusive content. Oh, and those driver tires in the footage seen in this video, that all DF supporters, a brilliant community-driven idea. But that's it, that's the video, but it's not the end of our coverage. We have much more to share on Forza Horizon 5, including an in-depth tech interview, so watch out for that. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.